We are now turning to the chain rule, which, as it will turn out, is one of the most important differentiation rules that we would have. So, so far we have seen how to differentiate powers of the variable, constant multiple of the function for which we know the derivative, sums of derivatives, quotient of derivatives, products of derivatives, and trig functions. And so with all these building blocks, powers of functions and trig functions, and applying the four operations, we can differentiate a good deal of functions. However, that would not apply to a function like that, the square root of x squared plus 1. We know how to differentiate x squared plus 1. We know how to differentiate the square root function. But now, this new function, root of x squared plus 1, is not built from this building block with the op operations we have studied so far. If you try to calculate the square root of x squared plus 1 at a particular value, you would first calculate x squared plus 1, then plug the result inside the square root function. In other words, what we have here is a composite. Calculate x squared plus 1, plug it inside the function g square root, and we want to differentiate functions that are built that way, in other words, composite functions. So even though you probably know how composite function, functions are formed, um, I will go over a quick recap on this type of functions. So if x is a certain real number and I apply a function f to it, I obtain another number f of x, which in turn can be the input for another function g. And in other words, I can evaluate g at the number f of x and obtain another real number g of f of x. But this way we define a function that associates to x the number g of f of x and we call this new function g of f. So this is a composite of g and f. So for instance, if f of x is x squared plus x plus 1 and g of x is square root of x plus 1, and I want to evaluate this composite function g of f at 4, by definition this is g of f of 4, so I plug 4 in the function f, I obtain 16 plus 4 plus 1, so 21. In other words, I'm evaluating g at 21. If I plug x equal to 21 in g, I get square root of 21 plus 1. Note that if we were composite, composing the two functions in the other direction, like f of g, evaluated at 4, then by definition it is f of g of 4, and g of 4 is root of 4 plus 1 in other, one, in other words, 3. So we're looking for f of 3, and if I plug 3 in f, I obtain 13. It is quite obvious from the definitions, and you probably know that, but it is always good pointing out the obvious sometimes. If you compose two functions in one direction or in the other, there is no reason you should get the same thing. Now it's the same examples of functions, just to see algebraically how you obtain a formula for the composite. If I calculate f of g, it means I'm plugging g of x instead of x in the function f. In other words, to calculate f here, I take the argument that I plug in as an input, I square it, I add this argument to it, and then I add 1. So here the argument that I'm plugging in is g of x. So I obtain g of x squared plus g of x plus 1. And in, in my case, g of x is square root of x plus 1. So this is what I obtain. Of course, if I was composing in the opposite direction, that means that I plug instead of x in the formula for g, I plug the formula for f of x. In this case, that would give me the square root of x squared plus x plus 1 plus 1. For a given function that can be interpreted as a composite function, such as 2x cubed plus 3x plus 1 cubed, I could interpret that as a composite, write it as g of f at x, 
where f of x is 2x cubed plus 3x plus 1, which I plug inside the cubic function g of x. But I could also interpret it as plugging the function 2x cubed plus 3x inside the function x plus 1 cubed. So as you can see, um, in general we can interpret a complicated function in many cases as a composite of two simpler functions, but this interpretation is not unique, there are many ways to do that. Now let's go back to our problem of differentiating this kind of function. I'm in the situation where I have a composite function. So I have y is g of f of x, and I want to find the derivative as a function of x. In other words, if I use the interpretation of derivatives in terms of rates of change, I'm looking for the rate of change of y with respect to x. y is g of f of x, so it can also be interpreted as a function of u, where u is f of x. I can write it as g of u, where u is whatever is plugged inside g, in other words, f of x. As a function of u, so here y can be interpreted either as a function of x or as a function of u. As a function of u, it's simply g. In other words, the rate of change of y with respect to u is a derivative of g as a function of u. In other words, since u is f of x, it's the derivative of g evaluated at f of x. On the other end, u is a function of x, and as a function of x, it's simply f. That is, the rate of change of u with respect to x is simply the derivative of f at x. Now let's think about these rates of change. If, for instance, y grows twice as fast as u, and u grows three times as fast as x, then try to think about how many times faster than x does y grow. Right? u twice as fast as u, u three times as fast as x, then y should grow six times as fast as x. Hopefully this is something that is intuitively clear. So if I reinterpret that, if the rate of change of y with respect to u is 2, and the rate of change of u with respect to x is 3, then the rate of change of y with respect to x is 6. In other words, to get the rate of change of y with respect to x, I multiply the rate of change of y with respect to u with the rate of change of u with respect to x. So that gives me this formula, which is formally easy to remember because it corresponds to simply introducing in the fraction a du at the bottom and at the top. Now let's try to reinterpret that in terms of the functions g and f. dy over dx is a derivative of the composite, the derivative we're looking for. dy over du, as we have seen, is simply g prime evaluated at f of x. And du over dx is simply the derivative of f. In other words, the interpretation of the formula we have obtained for rates of change in terms of derivative of the functions g and f is that if I have this composite of g and f and I differentiate that, I differentiate the outside function g, evaluate at the inside function f of x, and then multiply by the derivative f prime of the function inside. So here is our chain rule under two different forms. One of them is that the derivative of g of f is g prime evaluated at f of x multiplied by f prime of x. Or if you think of that as y being g of f of x it can be interpreted as g of u where u is f of x this can be written in terms of rates of change as dy over dx is dy over du multiplied by du over dx one more time here is our chain rule so let's see how it applies going back to the original example of 
the derivative of the function square root of x squared plus 1. So this is the derivative with respect to x, x is a variable, of the square root of some function u, where u here is x squared plus 1 and corresponds to the function f of x in the formula. The formula tells me that to differentiate the composite, I get g prime evaluated at this inside function f of x times f prime. I can think of it as g prime of u multiplied by u prime. So now I have the derivative of g of u, where g here is simply the square root function. What the general says is that to differentiate g of u, in other words, a function that I can see as a function of x or of u, and I want to differentiate it with respect to x, I can first differentiate with respect to u, and then multiply by the derivative of u. In either of forms, this is what I have. If I differentiate g of u with respect to x, I get g prime of u multiplied by u prime, or if I differentiate a function with respect to x, I can first differentiate it with respect to u, then multiply by the derivative of u. So the derivative of square root of u with respect to u, the derivative of the square root function is 1 over 2 square root, so I obtain 1 over 2 square root of u, and I multiply that by the derivative of u with respect to x. Replacing u by its value, x squared plus 1, I get 1 over 2 square root of x squared plus 1, multiply by the derivative of x squared plus 1, which is 2x. So I obtain x over root of x squared plus 1. Let's look at a second example. I want to differentiate cosine of x cubed plus 1. So I have an inside function x cubed plus 1, which corresponds to f in my formula, that I plug inside the outside function, which in this case is cosine, and corresponds to g in the formula. According to the chain rule, I obtain the derivative of the outside function evaluated at the inside function. My outside function here is cosine, so I take the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine, evaluated at the inside function x cubed plus 1. So I obtain negative sine of x cubed plus 1. And then I have to multiply by the derivative of the function inside. So derivative of x cubed plus 1 is simply 3x squared. In other words, the derivative of this function is negative 3x squared multiplied by sine of x cubed plus 1. Now move to the next video to see more examples and some applications.